Apathy is a lack of interest and emotion. Starkson and Legions described apathy as a disorder of diminished motivation, as manifested by reduced goal-oriented and goal behaviors and cognition. Hammer in 2004 stated that the most destructive type of apathy creates boredom. While apathy has many causes, one of the main causes that can keep apathy to grow or to keep going are communication problems between students and teachers. Students send the message that they're bored or unmotivated, but the teacher receives that as the student is lazy and incapable of responsibility. Then the teacher in turn sends the message that the students can't do anything. The students then receive that message as the, stu the teacher thinks I'm stupid, so I'm not going to even try. This is a cyclical process. The consequences of apathy can be destructive to students in several ways. First, students develop self-doubt and believe they don't have anything to offer. Academic abilities can also suffer. Students begin to believe that they cannot do well in school, so they stop trying. The long-term consequence is a belief that they have no skills to offer the world in adulthood. There are two main views of apathy. The psychiatric view sees apathy as an internal issue that can be remedied by changes in the individual. Educationally, apathy is seen as an external factor that is best handled by changing teacher behavior. My hope with the CBR project was to take the psychiatric view and the ed educational view of apathy and mix them together. In this way, the students could create solutions to apathy that they would find effective. Basically, I wanted to help the students shift their view of apathy from an external factor to an internal factor with modifications to teacher behavior through student suggestions. Apathy and engagement. I wanted to take students from looking like this and dreading the day ahead to looking like this and being completely and totally engaged. My phase one target audience was a group of 10 middle school girls who all attend the Hunt School. My phase two target audience was a group of eighth grade middle school students. There were seven boys and four girls. Okay, so our kind of idea here is that I want y'all to come up with some solutions um, to apathy and, and in hopes that maybe we'll inspire some other kids to stay going. So as you work in your small groups, there's two questions I want you to answer. What are some things that kids do, can do to help them stay focused on their sport? And then also, what do you do when you, to keep going even when you don't want to? Okay? Y'all think you can come up with some ideas? Sure. Cool. Alright, so the seventh graders, when they started with the phase one, um, their in solutions had a lot to do with um, just suggestions, I guess, more than something that people could actually do and, um, and then maybe see the results from. So what I would like for y'all to do is maybe come up with some ideas about what you could do like when you feel apathetic or when you don't want to do anything, like how you can get over that. first thing we did in phase one is watch the movie Blindside. Then we had small group discussions about what kids do when they're having a bad day. Sometimes you don't notice you're in a bad mood and then you fall. Um, you don't want to write them down, but you can hear it. What do y'all do when y'all have a bad day? Just go in my room and listen to music and Then we came back as a whole group and discussed some possible solutions. Because if nothing's going your way, then why should you do anything else that might be helping something else? Yeah, I, we should start the day off like this every day because just talking to somebody like this might be better. When you talk to the people about your problems, 
you sometimes you feel like free, like you don't feel that heavy thing anymore, and you just feel like, oh my god, everything is fine now. Phase two started with finding articles online about apathy, and then the students gave a short summary of what they'd found. Uh, freshmen get high marks in apathy. Um, so in 2011, a survey was taken, and according to it, 36% said they were frequently bored in class, and 34.5% said they overslept or missed a class. Then we came back together and talked about solutions in a large group. I suggest we have a time in the morning where we all get together and talk about things that were bothering us before school started. Yeah, but that would take too long and that would make the day longer. Yes, but the bad thing about that would be that it could start rumors a lot and no one really, you know, like keeps secrets and if it's something that we don't want to be sharing. So instead of that, we should make a goals list. A couple of students wanted to create some media. So what's your song about? Our song is about what we do whenever we are having a day that we feel like doing nothing and how we get happier and want to do things. Things are important to other people. They don't get me and I don't get them, but at least I can try it out. I think apathy is when you can care less what people say to you. You don't pay attention when students, teachers, or really anyone says. Okay, what I think apathy is, is when someone does something to you or says something to you and it offends you and you end up just going your day thinking about it. Hanging them in my locker helps me see that I am here for a reason and I want to meet those goals. The gratitude list helped me remember that even when things don't go my way, I still have many things in my life that are good. Really easy for me, but it is so easy that sometimes I don't really see the point. Seeing the goals I wrote helped a little, but there are things I deal with too. School doesn't always get the first priority. The results of my CBR showed inconclusive findings. Some of the students rated themselves as less that apathetic, and the number of students that dislike school decreased. This could be explained through Delafave and Massimi in 2005. They observed that apathy and optimal experience fluctuated depending on the associated activity. However, through personal observation, I noted a difference with students. Teachers commented about difficult students, and I was not having the same issues with them. It is my belief that the value of the exercise came from empowering the students and making their ideas relevant as noted by Riva in 2008. It is my belief that students offered more when they knew what they were offering was actually important to me, their peers, and themselves. After CBR, I realized the importance of empowerment and how as a teacher I can help students make internal changes that create positive consequences in various aspects of their life. I am more careful about what I say and how I say it. Further, the leadership value I gained from this experience helped me understand how to work together with people to create a positive and healthy environment for everyone involved. And that in itself was a priceless lesson. My CBR experience changed how I see myself in the community and in the world.